Starfield is going to be launching soon, and you know what that means, right? It means YouTubers like myself are going to be using the interest and hype in the game to get views. It's true. But what I wanted to talk about in this video is the lore that we know so far about Starfield and kind of get an idea of what we can expect. What is the what is the story that we really need to know before we jump into the game? Because I think with any good RPG, having some background to to what's going on is really important. And for the most recent epic RPG that launched Baldur's Gate 3, that was already pretty well established. And there was already all this background with Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. But beyond that, we had lots of cinematic trailers and interesting information. And the fact that the world itself, Faerun, Forgotten Realms in general, well, that's older than me. So there was a lot to go on. Not so much with Starfield. Starfield is the first new IP coming from Bethesda in 25 years. So there's a lot to go into. Well, let's let's take a look and kind of see together what's what we can expect from the game, what we should know. And thankfully, we have a lot of that information from an official timeline that was released by Bethesda, as well as some animated shorts that are pretty interesting. Now, this timeline spans 278 years of history, but there's one glaring absence in all of this. Where the f is Earth? What happened to Earth? Is it did it explode? Did it die off? Did everybody just have to leave? I'm kind of curious to see what happens with that specifically, because as you'll see in the timeline, Earth is not really there. Our first entry is for 2050. This is the year that humans arrive on Mars. We aren't really given an indication on exactly what has brought on this, this rush to join space, but by 2100, humans are living there. Another 56 years after that, in 2156, Humans have moved well, well beyond Mars and have arrived on Alpha Centauri, 4.37 light years away from Earth. To put that in some real world perspective, Mars is 15.85 light minutes, minutes from Earth. In this case, traveling at the speed of light would get you to Mars faster than the length of this video. This marks a significant change and a massive change in space travel capacity in just a short time period in this timeline. But don't worry, it's not all good things. Humans will inevitably f*** it all up. In 2159, the United Colonies are established. We actually get a look at the United Colonies in the final animated short we got from Bethesda, Supra et Ultra, which takes us to the next entry on the timeline. New Atlantis, which was founded in 2160 and became the capital of the United Colonies in 2161. Looking forward by just over half a decade, we get the founding of Aquila City on Cheyenne by Solomon Coe in 2167. Hold on to these two parts because they're going to show up many times coming up. It looks like from here there is some relative or perhaps tense peace until 2188 when Ko invites Voli to join Cheyenne in new alliance called the Free Star Collective. They accept and the Free Star Collective is formed in 2189. Tensions continue to rise when the United Colonies install a star station called the Clinic in orbit around Depala, a planet in the Narian system whose people are currently, or at least at that time, unaffiliated. The people of Deepala, frustrated by the station and seeing it as a not so subtle expansion of the United Colonies borders, ask that it be removed. The UC, of course, refuses. In retaliation, the Narian people vote to join the Freestar Collective, which I am sure you can tell is going to go absolutely fantastically well. Everyone's just going to be, OK, you know, it's cool. No problems here. We'll just We'll we'll move this thing. We'll we'll move the, the 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 clinic. It'll be fine. We'll just you know what? Have fun out there. Now, it's, it's, it's not what happens. Only two years later, in 2196, things boil over into outright war. A mobilization by Free Star spurs the United Colonists to move a fleet into the Narian system, and the Free Star respond, sparking the Narian War, a war that will not end quickly. Our next entry on the timeline isn't until 2216, 20 years after the war began. It's unclear exactly who comes out on top here because it results in a treaty signed by both the UC and the Freestar Collective that creates a new term, the Settled Systems. A few years later in 2221, the Freestar Rangers are formed, an elite protective investigative force dedicated to protect all in the Freestar Collective. 
To this point, everything has been pretty straightforward. You know, territorial disputes, war, that kind of thing. But it's here at around 2275 that things get a little more interesting and decidedly more mysterious in sci-fi. 2275 sees the formation of Constellation, a space exploration organization that is founded by Sebastian Banks. And now we get a cut like a few decades of relative peace and just, you know, you know, good, kind, good vibes and everything like that until until the Freestar Collective does something completely and utterly unforgivable. You see, they start farming. Specifically, they begin farming on a planet in the Lunara system, Vesta, in 2307. The United Colonists claim that this is colonization in a fourth star system, and it is in violation of the Treaty of Narian that has held for almost a century at this point. Diplomacy fails, and the UC lays siege to Vesta, killing everyone and officially igniting the colony war. The war, though, proves shorter lived, ending in 2311. It's also perhaps one of the things we get alluded to in flashbacks of the animated shorts we got titled Where Hope is Built, which through a flashback shows a battle over Aquila City, the capital of the Freestar Collective, and the heavy use of mechs and bombardments. In this battle, a flotilla of civilian and military ships from the Freestar Collective successfully take down major ships of the UC Navy using a hit and run tactics, essentially repelling their attack. Four years later, in 2315, the UC Vanguard is formed, a response to the Freestar Collective's use of civilian ships that provided so devastating to the UC in the Colony War. In the animated shorts, it looks like we could be getting a look at what this is in one titled Supra et Ultra, which shows a package delivery person joining up with a recruitment office on New Atlantis and rising in the ranks as they destroy enemy ships and being rewarded very handsomely for it. In the background of all this, Constellation continues to putter around, having retrieved their first artifact back in 2310. The group is joined by Sarah Morgan, the former head of the UC Navigator Corps in 2319, Walter Stroud, a major financial backer in 2321, former Crimson Fleet pirate Vladimir Saul in 2322, and Theologian and Theologian Theolo Theo Theologian Theo, 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 the, this word that I can't pronounce, Matteo Catri in 2325. The next few years see even more notable names join Constellation from all over, both Freestar and UC, and I guess as well as Pirates too. And Constellation takes center stage at the end of our timeline. The final entry to the official timeline is the purchase of Star Station L868 by Constellation, turning it into a deep space scanner nicknamed the Eye. Now, for me personally, I can't I can't think of the eye without thinking about Outer Wilds and the eye of the universe. So I'm already intrigued. I don't expect it to be quite as interesting as, as that whole thing was. But damn, like that's just it just works. The eye, the eye in the universe. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just a huge fan of Outer Wilds. The timeline sets up an intriguing and interesting adventure in the universe that appears to be beset by territorial disputes across star systems. Knowing Bethesda, along with all the bugs that we'll be getting, we'll also be getting a lot of different moral choices on who we should side with, who we should who we should help. And I'm sure it's not going to be black and white. I'm sure that there'll be a lot of gray in this, a lot of areas where maybe helping one person is actually kind of hurting someone else, but you're weighing the greater good and probably making the wrong decisions along the way. And all of this in like the background of the Constellation Group, like investigating interesting and mysterious things about the universe. And perhaps so get adding more of that little sci-fi thing. I think that is part of the, the whole part of the game that has been so, so closely guarded. Although we have gotten some glimpses of things within trailers that look really interesting and really just otherworldly to put it you know mildly like this section right here. But after looking at this timeline and looking at how things go, my my first like kind of like impression of everything is that it does seem like the Freestar Collective is the one that's kind of getting the short end of the stick a lot of times and kind of being forced into into situations by the UC. I could be totally proven wrong with this once we actually get to play the game, but it just seems like every time 
there's a there's an issue. It's the it's the UC that is is responding with some, some very violent force, at least by the timeline. But for all we know, this timeline was written essentially from the perspective of the free of the Freestar Collective. We don't know. I have no idea what Bethesda is up to, but I am very interested in checking it out. But that said, neither of them seem like inherently evil. So it'll be really an intriguing little adventure to, to jump in on. At least if I can pull myself away from from Baldur's Gate 3. My name is Redbeard Flynn. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.